We are here with the star of The Guilty, Jake Gyllenhaal, and its director, Antoine Fuqua. Gentlemen, thank you both for taking this time. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, I want to begin with making this film and making it under the conditions you did. This is a film that was shot during the pandemic. And, it, you know, the, the premise is something that, that suits that. But I know this was not, you know, uh, necessarily an easy film to make. Can you talk about the idea of remaking Gustav Mahler's uh, Danish film uh, and the challenge of a remake and the challenge of shooting it during the pandemic? Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that, Jake. So you, you found it. You, you, you developed it. Oh, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I saw Gustav's film, I saw The Guilty in 2018, and I immediately thought of it as sort of an incredible translation into the American context. I think internationally too. I feel like, I guess you could say North American context, right? Um, and I, I felt like there were so many themes underlying that just translated and transposed so well. And I immediately tried to figure out how to get the rights and um, it was a very successful movie at, at the time. And so a lot of different people obviously were fighting for those things. And so we finally got them. And you know, I'll make a long story short in that we spent two years developing the script. And then one day I came to Antoine, I said, I, we come to each other back and forth at different times. We say, oh, there's, I have something, we read it, we check this out and stuff. And we, uh, we keep and have continued to want to work together since we made Southpaw. And uh, he read it and in a day, to his credit, with his incredibly busy schedule, and he said he wanted to make the movie. I think the, I think the thing about it was that we both saw something uh, that was so important, uh, the essence of it, which is that the truth set you free, which is that in the end, as terrifying and as painful as the truth, can be to face and you may have to sacrifice so many things to get there you end up saving so many lives in your own life if not if not on this earth at least for this character spiritually and admitting to that truth and that was where we both said we really want to make this movie for that reason no yeah, yeah absolutely well well jake yeah as jake said he, he called me uh about it and uh, I read it, and obviously, right away, I responded to the material. But then, <clears throat> it's a remake of Gustav's film, and I went and watched his film, and he did an amazing job. He did a masterful job, and I thought, hmm, do I want to remake this film? It was well done already. But seeing Jake play that role was the most exciting thing for me, and how we may be able to make it our own and, and introduce other layers to it. Um, I was excited about that idea, uh, the, the concept of. Um, being with one actor like Jake, who I love anyway, and have a lot of other great actors um, in his ear, you know, was exciting to me because, you know, listening is so important, right? As acting and things like that, listening or uh, the idea of, of making a film that's contained and intense and hold you the whole time. You know what I mean? How do you do that properly? And that was a challenge. And then during COVID, the height of COVID uh, was all daunting to do, but exciting at the same time, because it was, we had to start somewhere, you know, with the COVID uh, uh, danger of, of, of someone getting hurt, but it was challenging if we could find a way to do it. And it was something about the script and what Jake said to me, as far as the performance, what he, what he saw, that made me feel that if you're ever going to do one during this height uh, of COVID, this is the one. It's contained, you know, uh, your camera is mainly on, 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 on Joe, on Jake, but you have a whole world you have to create and you have a lot of people to do that. So we had to come up with ways to do that, efficient ways of doing it and keep everybody safe. Um, literally down to the earpieces, all earpieces had plastic all over it. We had plastic all over the floor. It was like walking into, it was like, it was a movie within a movie. Mm. Uh, it was just bizarre, you know, people in scrubs and all that. It was kind of bizarre, you know? Um, 
but it was something exciting about it because I, me and Jake are very similar where you tell us no, we turn it backwards and it means on, you know, it's like we're both the same. So it was like <laughs> we decided to dive in and figure it out together. And we got a lot of smart people around us and, you know, threw them a task as well. And everyone came through with flying colors and everyone stayed safe. But the performance uh, that Jake gave was just incredible. And I think everyone got excited about that when they, when they, saw, when they saw him begin that journey, you know, the whole crew. What I would say too, is that I, 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 when, I when I sent Antoine the, um, when I sent Antoine the, the, the script, I had always pictured shooting it in a very short period of time. Um, I'd always thought the only way you can get a filmmaker, a great filmmaker like Antoine to do a movie like this is by telling them they can make a movie in, in you know, a week, you know, because <laughs> that's all the time they have. So I, <laughs> I you know, on, with the, my professorial hat on, I thought that's the way I get, get in. So, and I also thought it would be a great challenge. And I think that, you know, the tension that the movie has inherently would only be, you know, increased like exponentially if we shot in a short period of time. And I think um, in presenting the technical aspects to Antoine before he even read it, I feel like that was, that was part of it too that excited us. And then, you know, outside of that, I think shooting in COVID, uh, we shot in October, 2020, Los Angeles, um, where we shot the movie was heading towards or careening towards lockdown and uh, almost every day we were worried because we shot the movie in 11 days you know that um if anything happened to anyone quarantine is obviously 12 days usually so if anything happened to anyone in the in the in the main sort of group of people the movie would be finished you know wouldn't be able to be made we would have to because we had just we had locked down this period of 11 days to make the movie we had all said we're going to put our chips in that one place and if something happened it meant we lost the movie and then we wouldn't be able to really do it i mean maybe we could have gone and done it six months later with half of the movie shot already somewhere or a quarter of it but every day felt like 25 days of a movie and so we shot the movie basically 20 pages a day um and we shot antoine had three cameras uh, simultaneously shooting. Um, what we didn't know was that uh, three days before we started shooting, someone very close to Antoine uh, tested positive. So he had to go into quarantine, but he subsequently tested negative number of days after that. So he was healthy, but he had to, by state law, go into quarantine. So we devised a plan <laughs> over a very chaotic weekend <laughs> and very scary weekend um, that uh, that we would we get a van with monitors and we would hardwire that van because we did try it on the Saturday after the Friday we found out that news to have Antoine stay at home with his van in his driveway but there was a quarter second delay from image and sound and it was like driving him crazy and it was like we can't make a movie like this so then we thought, let's hardwire the van a block away to where we're shooting. And so Antoine directed the entire movie from this van with walkie, like walkie-talkies next to him with almost every department head, monitors in front of him in this van, uh, uh, sort of God's eye camera so he could move his cameras around where he could see everybody moving and how he could cue extras. And he could communicate with his first AD and the whole crew that way. And we, from, we rehearsed on a Thursday, I think, Thursday evening on the set in person. And that was the last time I saw Antoine in person for the entirety of the shoot um, until he, until actually it was a few days that, uh, it was two, two shooting days, right? Where you got out of quarantine and you were like, I'm not coming on to set this, this process. Is I don't yeah. want to do it. I remember him saying, I'm like, are you going to come to set? He's like, no, this is working. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not coming to set. Yeah. That's unbelievable. What was that like for you, Antoine? It was weird at first, you know, because it, uh, it was just like you're conducting, you know what I mean? You got monitors and walkies and zooms and computers where you can see everybody. And it was just like a really, it was challenging. There was an echo 
that we were experiencing where Jaber had like, I don't know how many voices in his head, people talking and it was just like trying to fix that while get a performance and stay focused. And then it became really exhilarating because the van is really high tech van we, we discovered called Color Space. I just push a button and the doors would be shut. And I was just, I was just in my world. It was dark in there, there's monitors. I was just in the zone. And I was like, I'm not leaving. Here, <laughs> you know, because you're so focused in. There's no, no, no one could come talk to me. Everything had to be over a walkie. Me and Jake would communicate through walkies, through cell phones. When it was private, we would talk, things like that. And it was just like, it was as close to the experience I could come to that he was experiencing as this as the 911 caller like you're you, you're you're planted in one place you can't move right you, you're trying to control situations that you really can't control right and you're just sort of moving everything around and then things go this way you're trying to move things around but you don't have any control really you know you're just trying to get that one piece right you know and it was Amazing. close to I could come to what he was experiencing in, in the room there would be this moment where we do these 20 minute long takes, right? Callers would be set up on a Zoom like we're talking right now. The actors would be sitting in their respective homes or in a closet or like wherever. World though, everywhere. everywhere. over the world. And our first AD would cue them and then would cue a light to go on. Or if I was making a call, I would cue him to cue them to call in for my action. We would rehearse it like a play and then we would. And so at the end of these 20 minute long takes, you. We, were, we would all wait. It would be this delay for a response from our director. It was this, It was like we were waiting for this sort of God to say, we cut, we get the cut, and then, and then it would be like, that was good, that was good. Okay, that was good, okay, good, okay, that's good. You know, like, or, or if it was an emotional scene, there were a number of times it was actually really beautiful, like over the radio, I would hear Antoine say something like, and we'd always say things, he'd say like, oh wow. Oh, wow. Like he would, or he would, there'd be these emotional responses that very, very rarely does a crew or a cast get to hear. Like we get to see and experience and that's a whole other experience, but to hear the person who's your leader from afar, almost like you know, there are a lot of metaphors about making movies about people going into battle, which it is not, but you know, things like that. But when you get that kind of positive affirmation or, or direction from it goes in when you're listening and you don't even see someone's face. And it was like what Antoine said, it's almost mimicking the movie in a weird way. It was this mm -hmm. redundancy of an experience, you know, that we were living, you know. That's amazing. It's almost like uh, Antoine, you were mission control in Houston and, and you were, you know, on the spaceship or something, Jake, and, and you were kind of directing it all that way. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about one particular element of the movie, which is, a lot of it shot in close up, Jake, on your face. And, you know, screen acting in close up is a very particular discipline uh, that you have to learn, I, I imagine, as an actor. And as a director, the close up is an incredibly powerful tool, but it's sometimes misused. I imagine you had to think a lot about how you would act and perform in those close ups, Jake, and Antoine, how you would direct close ups, how you would uh, shoot them, edit them, light them, all of those kinds of things. When so much of the movie depends on close up, what does that lead you to do? Well, you know, we discussed it quite a bit. Me and Jake would talk. We would get on the phone every night and just talk things. It, it, the prep uh, before we got into it. Uh, and I would say to Jake, part of what I wanted to do when uh, when I read the script was film Jake. Right? There's a there's a you know a relationship with a director and an actor, and I was just like, yeah. I'm going to stick this camera. It's going to be stuck to Jake. And I didn't want to move it. And he, he was like, you do wide shots and all that, right? And I was like, not really. <laughs> it's going to be stuck to you, you know? But, <laughs> but it, was, it was interesting. It's interesting what happens is that um, when you're in close-ups like that, anything you do after that uh, is such a contrast. It's effective, right? When the camera just sits there, and, let, and allows an audience to just be with the person. Like, you just lean in more, right? If, especially if you could, someone like Jake could do that. But it's, it's hard on him because I literally didn't move the cameras a lot. And in the editing, my plan was always not to go to close-up until it really mattered. I mean, that's the, 
one-on-one -on -one filmmaking. But in this particular case, it means something because there's a lot of things, there's a lot of suspense and mystery that's happening that you have to try to read his eyes and you have to really listen. And so I didn't want to go to those shots until the audience has to listen even more. Like I'll go wide to just get the geography, but it was really about listening. And sometimes in you know, with, with, with film, right, with cinema, unless you get to something and point to something, people aren't always listening. They see it, you know, you close up, you push in on it. But when it's a film that's really about listening and making judgment calls based on voices or, or, or attitude or behavior, uh, you want to save those close-ups. You want to make sure they matter. You know, whether it's over at a red light, like what does it mean? You know, when you want to get tight on his face or tight on the earpiece, what does it mean? Why are you there? Because you want them to hear something in particular. You know, uh, in this case, it was like little things that were that were said that were that are clues that I won't give away that you have to listen for. Even just the way someone says something, you know, I just want to talk. Right. And you're going to go, that's weird. But then when you go tight on him, there's something happening in his eyes that you can't see, you know, and, unless you get up in, in his face, you know, it just seems like a normal day at work. And, but it's not. So I guess to answer your question is there's an intensity to that is an intensity to that, but it's not easy to do. And it's, and it's not something that you do with everyone, but that's part of what I love Jake. That's why I wanted to make the movie because as soon as I read it, I said, I'm sticking the camera to you. <laughs> it's going to be done like a play. Right. Like, I mean, really, you know, it's 20 minute takes, but it's more than 20 minutes all day. Mm -hmm. Right. And everyone's doing it like a play mm -hmm. and he's doing multiple actors switch off. This actor calls in that actor calls in this one calls in no cuts. Wow. You know, get close up. Mm -hmm. You know, for like 30 minutes. That you know, was something I, I came like. on you all that time. I mean, um, for me, I mean, I, I mean, I had just come from doing not just, but the last piece I had done was monologue on stage, basically for a whole year. Gone from off Broadway, Broadway back on Broadway with it, and I spent a lot of time alone with myself, with a lot of people watching me, um, in a different context, but. I felt comfortable and I feel very comfortable, even more comfortable in longer takes. I feel like it requires, you know, you start to push yourself over if you're lucky enough to do it over years, you know, in different ways, create obstacles. I always love obstacles. I always love a challenge. Like the thing I found most interesting of the whole process was when later on Antoine shows some lens sizes that were that required the operators to be six inches from my face for some takes, uh, three operators like this close to my face, you know? Um, and for me, what, for me, what was interesting was I've had that experience a few times in terms of like somebody wanting to capture something very particular um, with a moment. Um, but to play something over 20 minutes, sort of trapped in these shots, you know, I'm always looking for something I didn't expect because it's always an inspiration to me. It's like some actors will tell you that they don't like when, you know, sounds are going off or if someone's behaving a certain way or there's movement here or someone's in your eye line. I don't particularly love people being in my eye line. It's not great fun, but sometimes, sometimes it's very, very helpful and particularly helpful when it's not an intended thing or disrespectful to the moment. Meaning like if something falls or if there's a sound from outside that doesn't ruin the take, you know, or things that happen, they're inspirations. And so I just looked at this weird, I, first I walked in, I went, got tense immediately. Like, what's he doing? How am I supposed to do this? I can't do this. Like, how is someone supposed to act like I'm going to fog up the camera I'm gonna pop the lens up from like it's so close to my face. But then I just I just trusted that all these feelings were going to come from it. And and I and I ended up using them and listening to them. And the thing about it is Antoine gives you that space like 
he is so used to working with actors who require that kind of space. I mean, thank God for Denzel and Ethan and all those actors that he loves and he works with that love him because they have shown him that actors need that space that they, and he respects that space so deeply. And so that was, that was, he already gives it to you, which is why I love working with him. You, you don't even have to ask. He's, he says, I've created a, a field, go play on it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to watch you. There's just, I, there's just nothing better. There's just nothing better than that experience. But mm -hmm. it's very weird having cameras that close to your stuff. <laughs> Can't do that with everyone. Gentlemen, um, I want to thank you both for taking the time to talk about The Guilty. It really is a masterclass, both in direction and in performance. Uh, and I'm so glad we have it here at the Toronto Film Festival. Jake Gyllenhaal, Antoine Fuqua, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.